Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining today's webinar and taking time out of your busy schedules to learn more about Wine Grenade. My name's Hamish Flack and our presenters today are Dave Matthews from Classic Oak and Mark Elton from representing Wine Grenade. Just before we go into the presentation, I'll just go through a couple of housekeeping matters. Firstly, if you keep your uh, audio on mute, I'd appreciate that. The session should go for about 20, 25 minutes, and that'll be followed by a Q&A session. Uh, to ask any questions for that Q&A, just simply use the chat mode on, uh, on the presentation. After the uh, session, we'll actually send you a short so survey, and we'd really appreciate if you could uh, complete that, give us a wee bit of feedback. So, Mark, I'll just hand it over to you and let's start. Hey, thanks, Hannah. Yeah. And uh, thanks again, everyone, for joining uh, and taking time out of your busy schedule. I'm Mark Eltham. I uh, am the CEO at Wine Grenade. And today we're going to talk about microoxygenation, and we're going to talk about uh, our product at Wine Grenade that we're in partnership with Classic Oak in Australia. Quick little agenda for you so you know what we're talking about. We're going to cover why and when you should be looking at moxing your wine. We're going to give you a really good overview of the wine grenade system. We're going to tell you why we think it's unique on the market and why we think it's different than the other mock systems out there. Uh, and quite important to everybody in this call, I'm sure, is the pricing and how that influence, influences your, your cost of goods sold when you're going to use a wine grenade system. Uh, Dave is going to take you through a great trial on Shiraz uh, from Fox Creek. And as Hamish said, we're going to have Q&A at the end so we can answer all your questions. So please fire them through during the presentation and I'll be love, it will be great to take them at the end. So if you, if you step back a little bit and, and you think about mocks traditionally, you know, you think about, well, when am I going to use it and why am I going to use it? And a lot of things really pop to mind. Uh, you know, are you going to stabilize color? Are you trying to integrate oak in a stainless steel tank? You know, building that mid palette, helping to work on astringency and reductive aromas. And that's quite traditionally in, in what, what's been done with Mox and what you do with our system as well. The other part that comes with it is when you think about existing Mox systems, they're very CapEx heavy. Uh, sometimes you have to have a Sparky come out and hook it up and a bit cumbersome to use and they're usually bolted into the ground. So this is where Wine Grenade has entered into the market. This is our unit. I'm gonna show you the pieces, but we're gonna keep referencing back to them during the presentation. This is controlling all the microoxygenation. So that's our, that's our box about the size of a lunch box. And where we come in and where we think we add a lot of benefit to this process for you is around the cost, so our cost of entry. So you can get up and start moxing your wine uh, we have a patented uh, two materials, so a permeable float and a, a membrane. And I'm going to show you more detail later on, but that lets you get a more even distribution in your wine and you get good direct contact of that oxygen being used. So that's unlike other systems that use sinters or bubblers. We think we have a system that's easy to use. Uh, we hope you think so too. And it's very flexible and portable. You can see. This weighs nothing at all, it's about two kgs, so you can move it around your winery and do whatever you want with it. But let's get into some of the specifics. So that's the first shot, that's a unit, so you can either see it on the screen or see it in your video of me holding it. About the size of a lunchbox, it's Wi-Fi enabled, you control it through a portal on your phone, or you can control it on any internet browser. The float in the membrane, this is the size of the float right here, fits in the palm of your hand. The membrane hooks up to it like this. So once it clicks in, you know it's clicked. And as the system uh, is pumped full of oxygen, it floats up. And as it releases oxygen, the membrane drops down. So this is going up and down in your tank about once every hour. And that's distributing the oxygen evenly across this permeable silicone tube, all food grade and all that good stuff. The cool thing about this is that's your oxygen supply. So palm of your hand, you put into the device, there's only one spot, it's labeled oxygen, so hard to mess up and you screw it in. Single use canister and away you go. 
Now let's, let's dive a little bit more into the wine grenade unit. Well, what can you do with it? Well, we say you can comfortably treat up to a 50,000 liter tank with one unit. You can release anywhere from about half a milligram per liter per month up to that five milligram liter per month. That's going to cover you for all your uh, pre and post mellow MOX use and for your maturation as well. This canister is 22 and a half grams of oxygen. Everything's food grade. And most importantly, this little guy right here, you can have it, plug it in or three to four weeks of battery life. So if your winery loses power for any reason, the settings are saved on this. It updates every 15 minutes and it will continue to mox your wine. So it doesn't need power for three to four weeks. Power comes back on, you plug it back in, charge it up and you're good to go again. And what we think is one of the key things about this is the precision delivery with this float impermeable membrane. We have it programmed down to a, uh, a fraction of a percent in terms of accuracy. So what you put into the wine is exactly what's being consumed and used by the wine. Let's keep going. Well, it's small, it's portable. Uh, we've made it uh, use on an app. So it's about a 10 to 15 minute install. Uh, the device arrives, you unpack it. It's just like hooking up a laptop to Wi-Fi. You turn it on. You go through a setup procedure and away you go. Not much more than that. There's no big bolting things into place. Uh, there's no sparky to come hook things up. It's pretty much that simple. So let's Mark, take a look. Yep. Oh, sorry, Hamish. Yep. Sorry to interrupt there. Just a question that's been raised a couple of times is um, with the Wi Fi, if you don't have Wi Fi coverage, um, what are your options? Yeah, great question. Thank you, Hamish. Uh, you can run it off a 4G SIM card as well. So you buy one of those from Vodafone or wherever you need to do that. So it can hook up to that. If for some reason it's hooked up to Wi-Fi, you're out of power or even 4G network goes down if you're going that way, it will continue to run on the battery uh, for three to four weeks with the last setting saved to the device. So, so you're good to go if you don't have Wi-Fi. Uh, you can just get one of the 4G cards. Thanks. So, yep. So on the old web app, the things you'll see and the things you can change, it's gonna annotate here for you. You log in, anybody in your winery can log in that you give access to. You know, the app is free. We add as many people as you want. That's your release rate in milligrams per liter per month. And you'll see things like, oh, oxygen remaining in the canister. You'll see two temperatures, the wine temperature. Obviously, if your wine's at 75 degrees Celsius, you got a problem. So pay attention to that. And the cellar temperature, and that's the temperature inside the box. As well, you can put in things like this so we can keep track of it for you as well. Tank IDs, volume treated, you know, the varietal, standard stuff like that. All right, let's keep going. So let's say you're running low on this oxygen canister or for some reason there's a leak in the system or uh, an impingement in flow in any way, you get an email, it updates every 15 minutes. So if something is going on in the unit that shouldn't be going on, you'll know via email right away. Uh, if the battery's running low, if you forgot to plug it in, uh, it will tell you once it's below 20% as well. Pricing, getting to the real important stuff here. So in partnership with Classic Oak, we have an introductory price to get more units into market at $1,500 per unit. So it's $1,500 Australian. These are all Aussie dollars for this right here. Oxygen canister, that one right there, 135 Aussie and the membrane, you're looking at 60 bucks per meter. And it, how much you go through really depends on your choice of MOX. If you're powering through at five milligrams per liter per month on a 50,000 liter tank, you'll go through a lot more canisters. If you're doing a more gentle one to two milligrams per liter, let's say on a 10,000 liter tank. So let's just take a quick look at a, at a typical example of somebody trying to age uh, using MOX, 20,000 liters of red wine, or well, three months, 
so maybe they're looking at uh, some reductive alterations and maybe you're looking at some, uh, some color stability. So you're gonna go about two milligrams per liter per month. Well, once you start looking at the numbers, you can see what it's gonna cost you per liter. So here's your cost of the wine grenade unit over five years, your consumables per annum. So that's your oxygen uh, canister, as well as your membrane that we recommend you change every year. And that works out just to under eight cents per liter for that 20,000 liter tank or six cents for, for a bottle. Next couple slides, I really would like to just jump down a little bit more deeper into this membrane diffusion and active flow, because this is, this is the stuff we think sets us even more apart for the competitors. So we're, we're Wi-Fi connected, we're mobile, you can take it and put it on any tank you want, uh, but let's talk about the oxygen delivery. So most existing mock systems and market use a center or bubbler. Well, as we're showing before, this is a silicon membrane so it's a semi-permeable membrane that when you pump it up, the float rises to the top and the oxygen makes direct contact with the wine as this float goes down and goes back up. So it's a much more even distribution, I guess if that's a word, of oxygen in the tank. Uh, you're not gonna get over oxidized areas and you use precisely the amount of oxygen that the wine needs. So you're not pumping in extra. And the real key thing for us actually is with existing systems, when you see bubbles, those bubbles mean the oxygen is not being consumed by the wine and those bubbles of oxygen are rising into the headspace. And you don't want excess oxygen in your headspace. Uh, so for our mock system, because of the active float and because of the membrane, all the oxygen you use is being consumed in direct contact with the wine and there's no O2 leading into the headspace because we don't produce bubbles in our system. And just a little deeper on how it works, not too much, is you start off, we pump oxygen into the tube, so it's got to come in from somewhere, and it starts to diffuse through the membrane. Now that diffusion is driven by this active float system. So it's this right here holding in my left hand. And as the float is driven up, the oxygen just right at the surface of the membrane is being wicked away almost like a windshield wiper on the front of your car in the rain. It's just removing that oxygen from the surface of the membrane and then more is pumped to it. So it's just this constant uh, feed of oxygen directly into the wine and being used 100% upon contact with the wine. So no oxygen being wasted. Uh, and because we like to put our unit across as many things as we can, uh, you might think putting uh, a potential barrel replacement uh, and using it on barrel seems odd. Uh, so did we until we got asked by a customer uh, aging a California Napa and a, uh, a Burgundy wine as well. So it works across 12 vessels. Uh, you can do either the standard 225 or go up to 1,000 liters. And we just, as you see on the picture, it's nothing fancy. We make a little we make a little junction and each barrel has its own bung with about 15 centimeters of permeable membrane in it. And you can control the rate, you can tee things off so it's all safe. Uh, probably as equally exciting to us as our current product on the market is the other things we're, we're planning in development to bring to the market. And this is where we're gonna send up a follow-up survey so you can really help me and our company guide uh, towards your needs as winemakers. The first one on the left side of the screen is the scale-up. That's a unit currently being used right now on a 120,000 liter tank. So we're going to increase the size of the tanks we can mock up to about two or 300,000 liter in total size. The unit's pretty much the same same, except you'll see on your screen that it's hooked into uh, a bottle of oxygen from BOC. Little regulator step down the pressure runs into the unit and that's pretty much it. So you're going away from what I'm holding in my hand, these little canisters to a larger oxygen supply. The second thing and that we're very excited about, we need your feedback on, is the sensor pack. So we wanna give uh, 
winemakers a greater control and a greater precision and insight into those ferments. So we're working on uh, sensor pie coming for next vintage. Uh, we hope that uh, does bricks, pH, uh, dissolved oxygen, oxidative and oxidative reductive potential. Uh, we're looking at slightly more advanced things as well, like SO2 and H2S, so you can measure those in real time. So as your ferments are going, uh, you can either manage by exception, or you can drill in and get more information regarding a specific ferment. The third uh, piece we're working towards is aged spirits. And I'll just move that a bit so you can see. Uh, I wish we were working with Edredor. It's my favorite whiskey in the entire world, uh, but that's just an example. So we're working uh, with a company in the US on accelerated uh, aging of American whiskey, so a Tennessee style, bourbon style, using our exact system. Now I'd like to hand over to Dave to talk about the trial we performed at Fox Creek. Dave, over to you. Thanks very much, Mark. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, so we did two trials, and that was really about proof of concept for our business before we uh, took on Wine Grenade as a, as a product. Uh, one was at Fox Creek, the other was at, at Tintara. Uh, each trial went over about six months. Um, and I'm basically just going to talk to, about, to you about Fox Creek this morning. I can provide detail on the other trial when it, if anyone is interested. Um, 10,000 litre tank, 2018 McLaren Val Shiraz. It had been through Malo. Um, sulphur had been added. Uh, it was given a moder um, what I'd call a moderate or modest rate of um, oxygen at two milligrams per litre per month. Thanks, Mark. Um, this, is a, this is actually a picture of the device uh, on top of an outside tank. Um, you can actually see the, um, the bung is actually, the, the breather has been removed from the tank lid and the bung has been inserted into the breather. This is the typical way that we'd, uh, we'd put it in situ. Uh, uh, the device was controlled remotely. In this case, at, at uh, Fox Creek, it was controlled via a, um, uh, just a 4G dongle because they didn't have Wi-Fi inside their shed. At the other trial site, Tintara, it was used controlled via Wi-Fi, although we did have to have them shift their uh, uh, a Wi-Fi booster closer to the tank farm, but it was successful. Um, they then received routine messages um, with regards to uh, changing of the O2 cylinder, uh, recharging every month, etc. Typically, they would just uh, plug 240 volt power lead into it overnight, and it would be ready to go for another three to four weeks. Um, with the Fox Creek trial, importantly, uh, a 10,000 litre tank at two milligrams per litre per month, the small oxygen canister was changed approximately every 28 days. So not an onerous amount of work for you to have to go up and change it every 28 days. Next slide, please, Mark. Um, some of the analysis we did. Um, over the six month treatment, uh, importantly, you can see that VA was uh, pretty much unchanged, which is uh, important. Uh, and we were happy with that result. Uh, we thought it would be the case. The wines were obviously on full storage, so no allage, uh, no oxygen in the headspace or being delivered to the headspace by small bubbles, primitive bubbles, because we weren't using a 10 or 5 micron sim. Um, the, uh, there was a sulfur addition in, in, in November, you can see there, which is, I think, a, a routine addition over the length of uh, wine maturing in tank. There was nothing remarkable in the analysis. We didn't do colour analysis. As I said, this is proof of concept from our perspective. Um, and so no colour analysis was done. Um, next slide, please, Mike. Uh, we used uh, a couple of different panels. Certainly the winemakers from both um, Fox Creek and Tintara looked at the wines. But, uh, and then about four, five months later, um, we had 22 participants at a workshop at uh, AWITC in Adelaide last year. So about 25 tasters in total. They were given um, nine attributes to score. Um, they're at least favourable and most favourable. So if we go on to the next slide, please, Mark. And you can see the radar plot there. Blue is the control, 
and the yellow or orange is the wine grenade treatment. Um, and you can see some stark differences there straight away. Uh, bitterness and astringency were decreased in the in the trial, in the treatment, um, and then um, uh, mid palate mouthfeel uh, roundness uh, and length of palate uh, were all improved in the treatment. Um, people were asked to give an overall quality um, uh, score as well, along with complexity and. Um, they were both in favour of the wine grenade treatment. Fruitiness was um, comparable on both. A a as an aside, I've looked at these wines a little bit uh, after this, so um, six months further down the track, and it's just my own anecdotal comment would be that um, initially, uh, when we uh, the wines were first uh, looked at by the winery panels, um, colour, I believe, uh, was, um, and so did the tasters, was better in the uh, control. As time progressed uh, over six months, and then when I looked at them most recently, which would have been at the 12 month period, um, there was a reversal uh, in colour. Only slight, but I still think it's something that um, you can see objectively. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so I'll really just sum it up with uh, with Ben's comments, the uh, senior winemaker at Fox Creek. He was using this because he, it was a, um, um, I don't think you'd mind me saying, it was sort of a, a, a premium product at that $25 to $30 range. Um, and he wanted to speed up maturation. Um, uh, and, so, and Wine Grenade achieved that for him. Um, and you can see his comments there. He was very happy with the result. Um, right. Uh, I guess I'll just sum up um, by saying, from my perspective, after looking at the unit and running the two trials, um, and I'm repeating a little bit of what Mark's already said, but the significant things from my perspective were, um, first of all, the way the O2 was delivered by the membrane and went from gaseous to, to dissolved state, almost immediately on contact with the, with the wine. So that's different to uh, other systems I've ever, ever been exposed to. The active float, which moves the membrane, which provides homogeneity throughout the volume of the tank. Again, something that um, I'm used to sampling a tank and I know it's just been a plume that's been going up from a center in the, in the middle of the tank. And so you, um, unless you're going to mix the tank every time you sample, then you're not getting a representative look at, at the wine. And then the final thing, of course, is the portability and connectability of the device. Um, Mark's already gone through. So, thank you, Mark. Thanks, Dave and, and Mark. Um, that basically uh, ends our little session. Um, we're just going to go over the Q and A. So, Dave, if you want to unmute everyone sure. and uh, feel free to ask questions, I'll just start up by asking Mark. Um, in tank analysis, uh, the unit currently measures uh, wine temperature. Seems like a great opportunity to measure other attributes. What's actually in the pipeline or being done in this space from wine grains perspective? Yeah, great question, Hamish. And let me let me just show you so you guys can see, this is the bung that will go in. And right now we got this temperature probe that's in there and you can monitor uh, every 15 minutes it updates. So uh, we're gonna send out a survey after this and it, it's a really great chance so I can hear from everybody uh, on what you would like to see to monitor from everything from primary ferment uh, to pre-mallow, post-mallow aging, right up to pre-bottling. What we have in mind uh, from what we've you know gathered so far are the pretty standard things. So looking at uh, bricks, pH, temperature for primary ferment. Uh, we also want to look at uh, reductive potential so we can get an idea on how much we can push that system with oxygen to, to move things along, either using oxygen as a nutrient for the yeast or oxygen uh, as a more kind of controlled chemical reaction for the aging of wine. But the, uh, the list is a mile long and we like to add more and, and get everybody's input. So uh, yeah, that survey, it would be golden uh, if you could take the time at the end just to let us know what and how you'd like to see. If you could measure acetic acid or volatile acidity, I think everyone would be happy with that. Oh, that's on the list. Yeah, sorry, that's on my advanced uh, list. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Uh, Mark, Nigel would like to know, when do you know when to replace the actual membrane? How do you know? 
Yeah. Uh, so we we recommend that you replace it once every season. So if, if this is in a tank and you just want to, you're done with it, you want to give it a quick wash with some water and drop it into the next tank, that's the best way to do it. Uh, but uh, Dave, you have some thoughts on that as well. Uh, yeah, my, my view is that you, the best solution would be to go from tank to tank um, and to continue using the device in that manner. Um, I think that, uh, Given that there's always going to be a hiatus in what you do around Christmas and so on, I think use it across the year and then buy a new membrane for the following year. No, I think you can soak the. Um, you think you can soak the device in um, um, citric sulfur solution and leave it there for a week, maybe two weeks, and then go on to the next tank. But ideally, go straight from tank to tank. It shouldn't be impossible. Mm -hmm. Mark, um, we noticed in Dave's presentation that the unit was outside. How weatherproof is the actual unit, or do you need to have any sort of protective case, uh, casing for it? Yeah, if it's going to be outside, that's a good point. You should put it into something to keep it out of the elements. But there's a big, massive seal underneath here. So this is, uh, it's not, I wouldn't call it dunk proof. It's splash proof. It's a bit waterproof up to a certain rating. Um, yeah, don't dunk it. Don't take it for a swim, please. But, uh, you know, if it gets sprayed and splashed on, it's designed to do that. Uh, if you're in a high, uh, wet area, then definitely uh, enclose it, you know, in a plastic bin or stainless steel, something like that, whatever you have around. Um, at this stage, has anyone got any more questions from the floor? Um, Mike Maldaris just raised the question. Uh, yep. He's asked, how long does a membrane need to be? Oh, good question. Yeah. So the length of the membrane will depend on the rates you want to achieve and how big your tank is. So we pump up to a certain pressure and that's released over time. So this is a two meter section right here. Um, the 20,000 liter tank is about a, a four to six meter length of section. Uh, 50,000 liter tank would be around an eight to 10 uh, section of membrane meters. Sorry. And just to follow up on that, Mike, the uh, the Fox Creek trial used four meters of tubing. So I guess that's um, four times sixty is um, yeah two hundred and forty dollars worth of tube. Yep. Good question in for you, Mark. Yep. Um, can a BHD gas bottle only be attached to the larger unit? And is it possible to do multiple tanks with different rates and volumes? Hey, exactly. Hey, good question. Uh, somebody's typing away. I'll just wait till that's. Uh... Yep. Sweet. Um, that that's part of our plan as well. So as you can imagine, if everything's pretty much the same, same, the BOC kind of line goes into there. Uh, we would like to have that option to do multiple tanks. You can do multiple small tanks with one unit, and I stress small, like barrels, because uh, you have to use the same rate for each tank, and maybe that's not appropriate for what you want to be using it for. But that is in our development plan, that the scale-up unit can address multiple tanks at once. Um, Simon's got, is it possible to mox fermenting barrels, e.g. Chardonnay ferments? Ooh, over to Dave on that one. Well, um, yes, it is, uh, but it depends on how much oxygen you want to give. If you want to give um, sort of max out the oxygen, then there are probably other ways of doing it um, during primary fermentation to provide more oxygen and get more survival factors generated by the yeast. Um, I think um, uh, at the tail end of ferment, uh, where you may have concerns about reductive characters, uh, then it's a possibility. Uh, but uh, I have to say, I haven't trialled this device in that circumstance, but you could potentially dial it up to five milligrams per litre per month um, on your tank of Chardonnay that's post, immediately post ferment or tail end of ferment and showing reduction. Um, it'd be interesting. Um, I guess, Simon, uh, it might be something we'd be prepared to work on with you if that was the case. Uh, Mark, Abby has come back with uh, his previous question about uh, the, the BOC gas bottles. Regarding my previous question, would that be a simple upgrade or would we have to wait until you develop 
it out or buy a new unit? Oh yeah, good good question. Uh, don't want to promise anything at this point. Uh, it's a unit that's in development. Uh, if there's major changes required, then it would it would mean a new new a new unit. You can still use the old unit. We're still going to run them and service them. It's not like we put a new one out and these are gone forever. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see where we get to the developments with that. Sorry, I don't have a more uh, straightforward answer for you on that. You just need to see where it goes. Um, while we're talking about tanks, Mark, uh, again, a few people have asked the question that at the moment we're recommending the units for the smaller scale wineries to medium size to up to about 50,000 litre tanks. Yep. Where is Wine Grenade at with uh, supporting you know, the bigger tanks? So we just talked about the, the gas bottles. How far away? What's in the pipeline at this stage? Yeah, I guess we can share this. Um, we can't say the winery's name at this point, but that 120,000 litre tank, uh, that is to just really stress test that whole new unit. Uh, it's on some Merlot in New Zealand right now for six months, and we're just pumping through it as much as we can. Uh, so once we have those results back, that's gonna be in four months from now, we'll take the unit, we'll look at its guts, see what happened. And at that point, we'll make a couple engineering decisions. So uh, my hope is we have it to market within a year or two. Um, but if it's sooner, then that's great. We'll definitely let everybody know. Okay, um, any more questions coming through? Otherwise, at this point, um, I just, sorry. Anyone got a question? Okay, well, look, thanks everyone for attending today's webinar. As reminders, as, as, as Mark's highlighted, there will be a survey coming out to you after regarding Wine Grenade. We'd really appreciate some feedback. Any questions that uh, you may have after this uh, session, please feel free to email either Classic Oak or Wine Grenade, and we'll get back to you as ASAP. Special thanks to, to Mark from Wine Grenade and for Dave for your presentation. And on behalf of Classic Oak, Thank you again for joining us today and have a great day. Cheers. That's the end of the session. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone.